Oh, hello there, and welcome to Prague Chattery 777. We're talking about Van der Graaff Generator. We have made it to the Reunion albums, um, and we've made it all the way up to 2008 with Trisector. Trisector. I don't know why I say or. I said world record a bunch of times, and I know perfectly well that I pronounce it record, because I'm Canadian. Um... Yeah, Trisector. This is the first album by the trio. Um, David Jackson has left the band. Um, I, we we're kind of led to believe that there was uh, a degree of acrimony involved when David Jackson left the band, which is really, really unfortunate because, uh, as you all know, Peter Hamill had a very long and successful solo career. Successful in a, a different way. Artistically successful solo career. Really long career that lasted and continues to last to this day, but it uh, went alongside Vandergroff and Peter and David Jackson was a very regular contributor to Peter Hamill, so lifelong musical partners. And uh, whatever happened, you know, it's never really been made clear. Um, that partnership ended with uh, the Vandergroff reunion. And again, we don't really know why David Jackson left. Uh, obviously, very controversial because. Uh, of all those classic Van de Graaff albums, one of the integral things is his saxophones and his uh, flutes. Um, so obviously a very brave thing for uh, the remaining guys, Peter Hamill, Guy Evans, and Hugh Banton to continue as a trio, but I think it was something that had to be done to protect the integrity of the band. As I was saying last time with uh, um, Present and Real Time, uh, I think you know, they wanted to reunite the band and make it, you know, be, be the classic band again, but uh, they still kind of did the reunion thing. You know, the, the tour for uh, Present was very much a here's the, you know, greatest hits collection. They're not really hits, but I mean, you know, we all know what the good Vandergraaff songs are, you know, us, us fans. They're all good, but we know the really good ones. So yeah, the tour was kind of the you know big glorified reunion kind of a thing, and uh, you know the tour came to an end, and for whatever reason David Jackson had departed the band for whatever circumstances we don't know. Like I said, um, and I think the remaining members of the band knew if they wanted to maintain the integrity of Van der Graaff Generator because. I mean, Vandergraaff is not a normal band. They're not a band that, you know, does a reunion show. You know, they... They're a band. It's a, it's a, it's a way of doing things. It's a, you know, it's a, it's a special way that the, these musicians interact together to create such a unique sound and such a unique set of songs across the collection. So, to maintain that integrity, the three of them kind of had to carry on, and they had to try it, and... Uh, Kudos to them, because that is a, that's a brave thing to do. That is a very brave thing to do, especially when you've got a back catalog that's so well well looked upon and highly regarded. Um, and I think, I, think they did I think they did really good. For me, this album is kind of special, because uh, I discovered the band around 2006, 2007. So this was like the first new release. Um, I, I was a fan, and all of a sudden it's like, oh, new album's coming out. So this is the first time I actually picked up an album in sequence of uh, the releases. And I remember being very excited about it. Um, and it's good. I think of, of, of the trio albums released thus far, and uh, Do Not Disturb is coming out. I haven't heard it yet. I'm really looking forward to hearing it. It's going to be out soon. It's going to be on, in my CD player very soon. And vinyl. I get the vinyl as well coming. Um, of the trio albums, this one probably looks to the past more. It's more, it references earlier things a bit more, and as such, I think you notice David Jackson's absence a lot more on this record than on Grounding in Numbers, the follow-up. Uh, but they, they were just, they were, they were getting used to playing as a trio, this is a totally new experience, and uh, mind you, <laughs> half the time, it's a piano, an organ with bass pedals, and drums. So there's no bass player and there's no guitar, just two keyboards and a drummer. It is a very unusual lineup and subsequently a very unusual sound. Uh, of course, Hamill plays electric guitar for a lot of the songs as well. 
Um, but it's still, it's still very quirky. It's, uh, it, and it's, it's weird, and that's what makes it Van der Graaff Generator. <laughs> you know, it, 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 its weirdness is akin to Van der Graaff Generator. So that's very successful in that regard. Uh, but yeah, uh, the album opens with the Hurly Burly, which is an instrumental. Um, starts out with the sound of uh, uh, the modern windmills spinning around. There might be a picture in the booklet here, if I look around. Which is quite a cool image, especially for the trio. No, uh, maybe not. I think uh, the image is all just maths and blackboard and stuff. Lots of triangles. A lot of great imagery to triangles. Um, but yeah, so it opens with the sound of this windmill going, and uh, you kind of hear a bit of Guy Evans drums kind of creep into the mix, and a uh, little motif played by Hamill on the guitar. Really, really good. Um, I was I was a bit kind of... I, I feel originally it was kind of an awkward opener, because, you know, Van der Graaff is so well known for the lyrics and the singing, I thought, oh, why, why is it opening with an instrumental? It's very weird, but I've 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 grown to appreciate it. Again, it's it's a typical kind of it's a slow wind up. Some might consider it to be, uh, you know, a bit of padding for the album, um, but I don't. I think it's actually a really good little instrumental. I, I love I like the guitar riff that do 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 Great guitar riff. It's almost got like a. Uh, it almost has like a kind of like an islandy calypso drumming pattern to it at times. But it's pretty rocking, it's quite good. Uh, then we, we get to the first proper song of the album, so track two, which is Interference Patterns. Now, I think this is the first the first real classic by the trio, and I think they've played it at every show since it's uh, since it was released. Um, introduces a new thing for the band, you know, the, obviously their arrangements in the past had always been kind of complex and extended and you know, they use a lot of weird time signatures and weird harmonies and whatnot, but now I think to uh, compensate the loss of Jackson, they started arranging things, uh, like interlocking patterns between the pianos, um, between the keyboards, rather. And uh, that's really the basis for interference patterns, and it's the lyrics are dealing with, uh, you know, modern science and uh, deep sub subatomic particles that make up reality god particles and all kinds of crazy things like that not really i'm not really annotating these lyrics very well and nor do i intend to um but yeah it, it's a classic vandergaard song quite short but again more arranged i think than anything that was on present i think there there was a more conscientious okay we're gonna write songs for this um like I said, I think Interference Patterns has a fantastic arrangement. And it's got some classic Van der Graaff madness to it. That... Just mad. Just mad. And a great concert opener. I think the second time I saw them, they opened with this. Maybe the third time as well. But great way to start the shows. Moving on, we get to track three, the final reel. Um, I like this a lot more when it, when it first came out. Uh, again, this is one of those songs where it kind of, you, you, the line between Peter Hamill stuff and Van der Graaff is kind of blurred, but there is a difference. Like, it still is a band song, and it still, you know, it still features, you know, good performances by all, all the members. Um, yeah, you know, it's, just, it's, it's the one song on the album where it's like, okay, yeah. I don't, I typically don't skip tracks on albums because, you know, that's cheating. <laughs> um, but if if I did skip tracks, this might be the one I would skip. Sorry, I think I'm sure there's a lot of people that do like it, but it contrasts the heavier stuff on the album. Then we get to track four, which is Lifetime. Um, very subdued, very subdued song. Uh, another another one of the modern classics. I think they've played this one at all the concerts as well. I didn't like it as much when I first heard the album when it first came out because you know. I wanted madness and craziness and Van der Graaff, gah! And then Final Reel and Lifetime on the album, it's it's quite fairly early on, and it, it really kind of mellows out a little bit. And they've always done that. I mean, Van der Graaff, you know, they're, one of the things they're known for is the fact that they go from, you know, quiet and beautiful to absolutely insane and chaotic, often at the drop of a hat. So it, it's, it's typical Van der Graaff. 
but anyway, back to Lifetime. I'm kind of what I'm talking about. What I was talking about. I'm blabbering on. Unscripted. My goodness. Um, but yeah, Lifetime, I didn't like it as much at first. But as a, as you know, as it's aged, I think it is a brilliant song. It might be one of the, it might actually be one of the best on the album, in fact. And the only one that's exclusively credited to Peter Hamill. Usually Peter Hamill was credited credited for everything Vandergraaf, with a few exceptions. This whole album, save for Lifetime, is credited to the whole band. But yeah, it, it, it's a it's a beautiful song, really. I love I love the those those nice atmospheric guitar chords that come in. You know, the can you remember how that was? Bit fantastic. It it, 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 it it I think it's the best song on the album. It, it started out talking about it. It sounded like I didn't really like it that much, but I, I think it's it's brilliant. Um, and me, you know, looking at it from the perspective of a young man, is. Profound? Is that the word? I don't know. I really like the song. Then, track five. Big time contrast. We get Drop Dead. And this is a song that I think is probably the, the forgotten song on the album, but I've, I've kind of consistently always liked it. To me, this is this is akin to the 77-78 uh, period of Vandergroff. Your Ship of Fools, Door, kind of short, three-chord wonder rock songs punky kind of songs and uh yeah you know it, it's lighthearted. it's it's kind of kind of a silly lyric um drop dead she said but again with with, with typical hamill there is there is a deeper meaning behind it it's about the uh I'm trying to think of the right word buffoonery of uh the male half <laughs> i guess that's the right word but yeah, it's 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 nothing to write home about, but it's a good song, I, and I think it fits really well on the album. It's good high energy too. I love the intro to Drop Dead. You hear the the riff, and then Guy Evans in the back. Sorry, have we started? <laughs> I love that. It's a good little bit of humor. Uh, now we get to track six, and this is where the album really takes off for me. This is where it be you know from track six on, it is out and out classic Van der Graaff generator. I think only in a whisper. Such a simple song. I think there's only two chords in it, and um, the lyrics are very, very difficult to to get through, to, to understand, I guess. But they're great lyrics. Um, oh, dust clouds building up on the horizon make way for the onslaught of the Visigoths. Some thoughts should be only uttered in a whisper. Scattered as your atoms all will be one day. I didn't put those in order. Those are just kind of lines that stand out to me in that song that are just wow they're cool listen to the wind that whips your every word away and it's very dynamic you know it starts out really quiet in these nice little chords and the chords don't change but the the playing the band plays much more uh you know it, it, get, it gets almost heavy and the voice gets really really good the older voice it's different you know it, it's it's always going to be different doesn't matter what singer you are your voice is going to change but uh, Hugh Banton on bass, playing bass on that song. He plays bass on a few other tracks. I think My Room from Still Life he plays bass on. Uh, then we go on to track seven. This is another one of the one of the modern classics. I should say, too, about Only in a Whisper. I'm really sad they never played that live more, because it's great. Anyway, I digress. Track seven, All That Before. This is... This this is another contender for best song on the album. This is just heavy. This is the the big heavy Hamill guitar song, and the lyrics are great. They're they're quite funny. It's about aging and you know you know losing track of your phone and forgetting what you're talking about and forgetting what you're doing and and it's kind of, there's a lot of humor at the start of the song and then the so at the very end the lyrics kind of get quite dark and scary. As it must be at uh, that end of the life spectrum, I'm but a wee, I'm but a wee lad yet. But yeah, great and some great playing by the band too. The really, really long instrumental section. I think I read a review about it, and they said, "Oh, it might be, it might be a bit too, too long." You can never take that middle section of all that before. It can never be too long. I just love that. Brilliant drumming by Guy Evans too. There, there's, there's some moments where it just phew, the hair raises, you know. 
Love all that before. It's kind of a funny riff too, the opening riff. That's uh, it's great. Great live song too, and probably really difficult for the band to perform. I mean, there's some tongue twisting lyrics for for poor Hamill to memorize. I mean, obviously he's always had really, those really long lyrics, but there's a lot of lyrics in this song, and he sings them fast. And if he screws the lyric line up, then it kind of throws the whole band up. So it's it's great watching the band play it. There's this hair raising kind of quality. Um, I think that's always been a part of their live shows, but particularly with the trio, because the stuff they're doing is typically so complex. It's you know. The, it, it, you're you're watching this band and you're thinking this thing this could fall apart at any minute and it's exciting it's a, it's like a it's that's part of the roller coaster I guess but yeah all that before is a classic track modern classic then we get to track eight this is the only song they've done since uh, the reunion since uh, it's actually the only song since Mergley's or sorry uh, world record that exceeds ten minutes. I think. Yeah, yeah, it is. We talked about how Mergley Street might be too long, so that might that might be the reason. But over the hill, uh, yeah, this is this is this is where I think they uh, quite consciously tried to recapture the the classic era. Um, that's obvious because of the song length, obviously. But it's uh, it, it's it's funny. It's not my favorite song on the album, but it is one of the modern classics. It is great live. I've seen them do it live every every time I've seen them. They played it. Um, really really slow mellow start. There's a great madness bit where um, when the song kind of gets going, the you know really really great stuff. Classic Van der Graaff moment. Again. Um, this is a song where I think you notice the absence of the sax. And I think that same, back going back to track three, the final reel, you really notice David Jackson's absence on that track. Um, but the the big chorus in Over the Hill is just is, is triumphant and uh, classic. It's a classic Van der Graaff. If we're living our lives as though God sat at our shoulders and give it our best and give some more still. and It's, uh, it's one of those triumphant, uplifting moments. Over the Hill is almost... Um, it's almost carrying on the theme of childlike faith and childhood's end, I think. I think, anyway. I, I think there is kind of a link. There is a, a thread between those two songs. Uh, and, of course, the madness bit in the in, in the middle, we're still learning our lessons in the dark. Really good stuff. And that big low piano. <laughs> Classic Vandergroff. It's great. And uh, yeah, then it, over the hill, kind of it, it decrescendos back down to a, a whisper once again, and uh, leaves the stereo space nice and quiet and mysterious. And then track nine just boom, viciously explodes, and you get "We Are Not Here." Now I really like this song. It's very simple. It's it's just a con constantly repeating motif a little organ bit but it, it is it is a it is it is a whole song of van der Graaff madness section basically it is a solid four minutes of just wonderful chaos and uh, dramatic intense lyrics again the talking about uh, yeah there's a few lyrics that I, I think reference that subatomic reality and whatnot great song great way to end it great way to end, to end the album the good coda and it kind of it, it, it does it does kind of wind down a little bit the band kind of mellows out guy evans closes the closes the hat <laughs> and trumps along and then we hear the sound of the uh, windmill come back and that kind of and then a sudden sudden ending which is great fantastic um, so yeah, again, this is this is uh, this al as an album. I think it's it's akin to uh, H to H E, and that the ingredients are there for a classic, but it's not quite there yet. They had to find their sound again because, like I said, without without David Jackson, that's a huge huge change, and a very controversial change, like I said. And um, I, for one, am happy that they survived. I know there's a lot of people that aren't as big a fan of the trio because they miss David Jackson. 
Um, and for me, I'm biased because I got into them when they were already the trio. When I discovered them, the trio just happened. So this was this is the Vandergroff that I grew up with, <laughs> I, I, you could say. So I really like the trio, and uh, I always will really like the trio. Um, although I certainly wish I did have the chance to see Vandergroff live with with David Jackson, because I mean, that, let's face it, that will always be the classic sound. But this is a this is a new Vandergroff sound. It's sim again. It, it's it's like uh, Quiet Zone Pleasure Dome. They reinvented themselves. It was a new band. They didn't add any new members at this for this junction, but it is a new, it is a new band. It is a a new lineup of the band. And uh, yeah, I think that's all, that's all there is to say. Like I said, not quite a classic, but it's building up to it. The band was finding their feet again as they were uh, dancing around their early 60s. God, that is so cool. I love that. I love that fact about Vandergraaff. They're a modern band, but they've seen it all and done it all. So yeah, uh, we will see you next time for the most recent Vandergraaff Generator album, except for the one that's going to be released in three days. Uh, we're going to be talking about a grounding in numbers. See you then.